Net neutrality, where did it come from? And why isn't it going away? That's what we're talking about today on episode three of Where the Web Was. Net neutrality is the principle that all data that travels across the internet should be treated equally by governments and internet service providers. This means that your internet service provider can't choose what content they deliver and at what speed. That means if you want to stream music, watch a movie, browse Facebook, or find other people on the internet who have been attacked by geese while trying to walk into a Kohl's, I am totally serious, this is not a made up problem. Your internet company shouldn't slow this down just for their own profit. And this has happened before. In 2005, Madison River Communications, which is an internet service provider and phone company, did just that. The FCC ordered them to stop blocking VoIP telephone service because it competed directly with their phone service. But where does this idea of network neutrality come from? The phrase was first coined by law professor Tim Wu in 2003, but the idea of treating everything on a network neutrally predates that. I like a lot. The precedent of net neutrality actually comes from who many people consider to be the worst president in American history. No, no, I'm talking about James Buchanan. In 1860, he signed the Pacific Telegraph Act into law. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America. All right, enough of that. On the surface, of course, that bill had absolutely nothing to do with network neutrality. The real purpose of the bill was to build a telegraph line all the way out to California. At the time, that was an epic feat. But in that bill, it does define the priority that messages should be delivered. It. Messages shall be impartially transmitted in order of their reception, excepting that the dispatches of the government shall have priority. And not long after, telegraph lines gave way to phone lines. The early phone calls had to be routed by somebody manually plugging something into a switchboard to connect you to the right person. So say you're living in Kansas City and you need an undertaker, stat. You pick up the phone, talk to an operator who's a real person, and tell them that you need an undertaker. She might be like, hey, that's my husband, he's an undertaker in Kansas City, I'll connect you right away. But if you're Almond Brown Stoger, the other more handsome, dashing, and epically bearded undertaker in town, you're gonna think that this is totally and utterly unfair that the undertaker's wife on the other side of town is taking business away from you. But if you're cool enough to grow a beard like that, you're not gonna complain. Well, maybe he complained. Instead, he invented the Stroger switch. The switch mechanically replaced the need for a human operator. Now you could just dial a number directly and reach the person that you were trying to reach. And completely revolutionizing the Undertaker industry. And phones too. The Stroger switch and all the technologies that have since been built on top of it have created this expectation of independence between the people providing the service and those of us who are consuming their service. And this became really important later on when phone companies were designated as common carriers. Common carrier is a legal term that means that that the network is open to everyone at the same rate, at the same cost, at the same time. And that the companies who provide the service can't discriminate against anybody for any reason. So in the early 90s, when internet service providers started popping up, they were just naturally designated as common carriers as well. In fact, cable television is also considered a common carrier. Of really bad shows. Get it? But this all started to change. In 2002, the FCC changed the designation of cable internet service providers from a common carrier to an information service. They followed suit in 2005 by doing the same thing with DSL. And by May of 2006, the US Senate decided to update the Communications Act. During the updating of this act, they were also gonna be addressing things like net neutrality for the first time. Yep, and it was during these talks that Alaska Senator Ted Stevens said the internet was nothing but a series of tubes. Tubes? This isn't plumbing. The internet's not a toilet. Well, not. Literally a toilet. So what's happened since 2006? Oh my gosh, so much. Let's see, the uh, FCC told Comcast to stop blocking BitTorrent and the courts told the FCC, no. So the FCC ends up creating the open internet order and that ends up going to court where the court said, no. And it's basically gone back and forth like this several times. Seriously, the only thing the FCC has managed to do successfully in the last decade is ban Janet Jackson from the Super Bowl. So I'm gonna stop here. This is a history lesson, not a current events story. And that's the end. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed it, please, uh, Share it with a friend and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.